but the thought was there second-rate human beings, untermenschen. But to me, Anna was not only beautiful, she was a valuable human being. There was confusion, utter confusion in my mind. What was going on? What, uh, you know, I want to destroy everything. We want to be their masters. It was unconsciously the beginning of uh, the realization that I was involved in something horrible. The advancing armies were followed by specially trained killing squads, the Einsatzgruppen. As they swept into the conquered territories, their mission was extermination of communist officials and all Jews. They are given a series of speeches uh, that you are to move in, be ruthless, be tough, we are the master race. Uh, this is a preemptive strike that you were to kill those who have a potential to be a danger to the German occupation. The first thing they did was to give an order that all men, all Jewish men, uh, between 16 and 60, should report to the center of town. Uh, I heard shots. Four hundred they shot that day. Their job was to come in and do what they did and go to the next town and, and do the same thing. In less than six months, the Einsatzgruppen systematically hunted down and murdered more than a million Soviet Jews. But shooting Jews one at a time was inefficient and psychologically taxing for the killers. In August 1941, Heinrich Himmler, senior commander of the killing squads, went to the Soviet Union and saw firsthand how seriously the executions had demoralized his men. He urged them to find a better method. January 1942, 15 Nazi officials assembled at a villa in an affluent Berlin suburb. Their purpose, to organize what they delicately called the final solution to the Jewish problem. Their plan to eliminate all European Jews, 11 million they estimated. The final solution, an expansion of what the Einsatzgruppen had already begun in the Soviet Union, would now be carried out by Heinrich Himmler's SS. The SS was ruthlessly efficient. All over occupied Europe, the roundup of Jews began. In July, the SS turned its attention to the Warsaw Ghetto. They told us that they are taking us to the, to the east, where we will be working. Every person which came to the train got a big loaf of bread and marmalade. And some people couldn't stand the hunger anymore and went for that piece of bread. Then we got suspicious because a large number of people were disappearing and nothing was heard from them. And the trains kept coming back so quickly. The rumors were saying that they were going to be uh, locked into camps and, and sometimes killed. That summer, 300,000 Jews were deported from the Warsaw Ghetto. In April 1943, those left in the ghetto fought back. 
For a few days, using stolen guns and Molotov cocktails, they held off the well-armed Germans. At that time, I belonged to the underground. It was very difficult, very hard. We knew that death waited for us on every corner. I doubt that there was any place on this earth an act of heroism like we witnessed in the ghetto. Bedraggled people after four years almost of occupation, starved people, uh, people locked within a very, very narrow perimeter. And yet they went against a German army, which at that time was still very victorious and very strong. We fought, not because we knew that we were going to, to win, but we also would like to make a statement. The uprising lasted a month, and then the German troops burned the ghetto block by block. Survivors were killed on the spot or sent to concentration camps. Nazi Germany's killing machine was a highly organized and efficient system set up with the cooperation of both government and private institutions. Jewish birth records were collected. Post offices delivered the deportation notices. The finance ministry confiscated Jewish property. Private companies took over Jewish businesses. The foreign ministry negotiated for the deportation of Jews outside the Reich. The six largest of 30 death camps were all in Poland, situated along rail lines for easy access. On Hitler's personal orders, German railways gave priority to transporting Jews to the camps, even holding up military supplies badly needed on the Eastern Front. From Oslo, Paris, Rome, Amsterdam, trains a hundred cars long converged on the Polish heartland. Sealed into boxcars were victims by the tens of thousands, known to their captors simply as freight. We were made to believe that we would be working, put into work camps. So we walked to the train station, When instead of being passenger cars, we realized it was cattle cars. But all delusions passed when the doors were shut, they were locked. Everybody was scared because we didn't know what's going to happen. Where did they take us? There was no water to wash. There was no toilet facilities. We spent five days five nights in these cattle cars. Then several people died right in the cattle car. Couldn't take it. We put them in a corner. The stank was unbelievable. Excrement, urine, death, hunger. The fear, the uncertainty. If they treat us like this, where are we going to be going? And then we arrived at that place. Somebody thought of the slit was Vietchim, Auschwitz. Everybody raus, out. And the screaming and the yelling. Mothers looking for their children. Little children, boys or girls, separated. A mother trying to hold on to her baby. And the SS men with the whips and guns. I would have never believed anything like this can happen to human beings. It 
was a peculiar smell in the air. You couldn't figure out what it was. Sweet smell. You smelled it all over. I never smelled anything like it. This was not a labor camp. Emblazoned on the gates of Auschwitz were the words Arbeit macht frei. Work makes you free. Auschwitz was Nazi Germany's largest killing center, built on land confiscated from Jews. The huge complex consisted of 45 satellite camps that clustered around the central core. The buildings, low and nondescript, housed the thousands that arrived daily. When they arrived, those too weak, too young or too old to be put to work went immediately to be killed, sometimes to the accompaniment of opera. The rest were deloused, disinfected, and branded with serial numbers. He didn't have a name, he only had a number. You were called by a number. You marched out by, you were counted by a number. They shaved our heads, and my mother was standing next to me. And when I looked at her, I didn't recognize her. She, she looked like an animal. And she looked at me, and I could see in her eyes, you know, the pain seeing me. And then that's when we lost everything really, our pride, just everything. And we became practically animals fighting for our life. The able-bodied were used as slave labor by the SS which made money by leasing them to German companies. Work began at 6 a.m they received a bowl of turnip soup at noon, a slice of bread in the evening. The SS said, here you come in by the door and you leave by the chimney. And when you were too slow after an order, they said, but uh, don't forget that the gas is waiting for you. Life was so hard that you practically forgot your family. I mean, things seemed so far away. Even those who fought to live didn't all survive. But those who gave up died. We had to carry pipes and sacks of cement, and we were beaten by the SS. I was down to... 90, 95 pounds, 85, I don't know. The normal food rations in Auschwitz were such that you had half a year, approximately, until your body gave out. Half a year. They figured it uh, very scientifically. The physical deterioration of slave laborers was monitored by the camp medical staff in a pseudo-scientific study of malnutrition. Other prisoners were subjected to medical experiments. This involved sterilization, castration, freezing. All inmates were examined regularly by SS doctors to decide when they were no longer useful. The camp commander decides who should live and who should die. So you pass naked in front of those people and they sit there with polished boots, riding up in their hand. Your heart sort of stops because to the right, you take your number and you know you're gonna die, and if you go to the left, you live for another day. Six weeks after she got off the train at Auschwitz, Alice Sylvester was selected. One day, they ordered us for showers. They marched us in the room where we got undressed, completely naked. Then they took us in that room with the holes in the ceiling. So they told us to sit on the floor. 
there was no window. 